Thank you for joining In The Word tonight on In The Word. Uh, we're dealing with uh, series number seven on faith. Dealing with series uh, number seven on faith. And we will be coming from a very familiar story out of the scriptures for those of y'all that are Bible readers. And um, we're going to be talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Hebrew boys' faith. How they had faith in a midst of the adversity. And today, uh, we all, I don't care who we are, we all facing some kind of obstacles in our life. And to overcome those obstacles and to pass the test that the Lord or the devil throws at us, we must have the right faith and the Hebrew boys are one of the uh, one of the a few characters in the Bible, or one of the many characters in the Bible that exercise their faith in the midst of uh, a, of a dying uh, a dire situation. And a lot of times, people are facing a dire situation. Uh, some you know, some people are uh, uh, um, face a medical. Uh, situations that you know you got a lot of medical issues going on in your body you got a lot of issues that's going on in your family you got just it's just dealing with a lot of issues in your life at this time and uh that's why i was wanting to talk about the hebrew boss tonight uh that god uh that somehow or another that it will build up your faith tonight and to trust god more and i don't care if they saying uh if you don't have your car payment in by Monday, they're going to come and get your car. I don't care if they saying, if you don't have your house payment in by Monday, uh, they're going to put a padlock on your house. Um, uh, whatever the situation is, if you have the faith, I guarantee you God will deliver. When will God deliver? God will deliver on his time. When is that? His time. We don't have no time. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Our our time is God time. God always going to be on time. He's never late. Reason why he's never late because he's the creator of time. And so if time is his and everything here, the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So time is in the earth. So the time is the Lord. And so we don't have nothing. And I know a lot of time we're like, you, you, you know, saying, well, uh, uh, God, he's on time. Yes, he's always going to be on time, God, because he the, He is the creator of time. And so when we realize that uh, everything is in the Lord's hand, I think our life would be much better. But Daniel 3, I'll be reading from the Upper Bible, uh, 3 and 16 and, uh, and through 18, it says, Shadrach, me, I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, Benigo, yeah, answered and said to the king, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hands, O King. But if not, see right here. The Hebrew boss was saying that King, we have the faith that God's going to deliver us out of your hands. But just in case he don't, just in case it is in his will not to deliver us out of your hand, King, we still know and believe that he's able. And it goes on to say, it, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods, nor will worship the golden image which you have set up. And so the faith that the Hebrew boys was showing that no matter which way the tables or the cards, the hand that dealt with to them was going to be played, under no circumstances they was going to yield to the king wish to Worship the idol God. To uh, when they hear the music, if you go back 
it tell about when they uh when, when the when they hear the different instruments play the music play that they supposed to come and worship the idol god that the king set up and but the hebrew boy said under no circumstances king if god do, if you do throw us in the fire furnace and we do get burned up under no circumstances we going to uh bow down to your golden image and so we got to have that same attitude what the Hebrew boys uh, had when we facing our adversity, when we facing our difficult situation. We got the no matter what, devil, you throw out, you throw my way. I'm not going to shack. I'm not going to sleep around. I, I, I'm not going to do nothing ungodly to hinder God from deliver me. And see, that's what happens a lot of times in our, on our Christian journey. We give in because of de uh, uh, because we feel like God ain't showed up. So, well, God, since you ain't showed up, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do this. And when we ain't hurting God, we hurting our own self. A lot of times when we, no, ain't no, uh, uh, a lot of times, every time we don't wait on God, we whipping our own self. We punishing our own self. God ain't punishing us. Let me say that again. I'm going to throw this ball. You better catch it. When we don't wait on God and when we take uh, uh, the hand that's dealt with us, so I lean not to our understanding and not all our ways acknowledge him, we want to play the hand. So I was like, God, okay, this hand dealt with, this hand is dealt to me. Help me to play it, God. Help me guide my footsteps, God. Help me to play this hand. That way, when I play it, I know everything's going to come out right. No, we want to play the hand that's dealt with us without God leading us and guiding us. And when we do that, my my people, that we just, we we are putting our own, we are punishing our own self. We make not, we putting our own, we putting our own self ourselves in uh difficult times when we don't have to be and so Shadrach, Meshach, Men uh, Abednego know what they were facing but they was determined in their faith not to yield so I'm gonna ask you tonight are you determined in your faith whatever you facing foreclosure repossess uh, 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 bill collectors calling you, whatever you are facing, amen, F maybe facing a, a, a divorce, maybe facing surgery, might be facing going to court, uh, whatever you're facing, do you have the determination to keep your faith knowing whatever comes my way that I know that God's going to deliver, like the faith that the Hebrew boys had. They had the faith that no matter what, King, uh, we believe God going to deliver us. And that's what we got to, that's what we got to have. We got to have the faith as the Hebrew boys, no matter what comes your way, you got to know that God's going to deliver and God is faithful. And I know God is faithful. I know before I got to this point in my life of, uh, 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 trusting God, I had some sweat, sweaty nights, I, 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 sweaty nights. Amen. But I thank God that, now I got the peace. I got peace where that my faith sustains me. I'm gonna say it again. I have peace where my faith sustains me. Like God, if something come my way now, my attitude towards God is like God. Ain't nothing I can do about this. It, I like to see how you gonna work this out. That's how I do. I, I I do God like that. Anytime I'm facing something, it's so difficult for me. I look at like God. I ain't nothing I could do with this. It, this is completely out of my hand. I like to see what you're going to do with it. I like to see how you're going you're gonna to do it. I already know uh, you already made a way out of nowhere because you say I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, and so I just need you to uh, show me how this is going to be done. And Or if you don't show me, I, I, I just wait. And, I just wait. I just wait. And And... In this old song we used to sing back in the day, wait, I say upon the Lord, I'll wait, maybe by John P. Key. You know, we, we got to wait on the Lord. Wait, I say on the Lord. Just wait on it. And 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 by the Hebrew ball, I mean, they told the king. Now, whatever situation that you are facing, talk to that situation like the Hebrew boss 
Talk to their situation. You talk to that situation, whatever it is. Like I said, health issues, marriage issues, issues on your job. You facing foreclosure, repo, repo, whatever that situation is. You talk to that situation. Like situation, I know, I, I, I know it don't look good right now. If you facing surgery, uh, the doctor report didn't sound good. I, I know what the doctor report says, but my faith tells me what God can do. That He's that we were healed. That. Uh, uh, that God supplies all my needs, that God can touch my body and speak one word and, and my body got to line up and have peace in it. And so we, we that's what we got to do. We, like the Hebrew boys, the situation they, they was in, they spoke peace. I mean, I mean, they spoke to that situation and that's what we got to do tonight. Whatever that situation, if you're a caregiver and it seems like you, you just at the end of your rope, I've been a caregiver and I took care of my mom for two years with dementia. Amen. And, and, and by me being on a child with her, uh, that was Wayne and Taryn. And I was at the end of my rope and I was like, if, uh, what was the Isaiah 41 and 10 that kept me? I'm gonna tell you, if you're going through something and you need a scripture to lean on, read uh, Isaiah 41 and 10. And 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 I, I tell you, it would, I, I thank God for Isaiah 41 and 10. That scripture kept me during the times I had to keep my mom with dementia. And if anybody know that you're dealing with somebody with dementia, as they get worse, uh, uh, and get more for, for the caregiver, it, it get more pressure up on you because you can't do nothing right. You can't do nothing right. And so, uh, uh, and they feel like some uh, most of the time you're against them, not helping them. And so, but to get, uh, the, the, the get back, it took faith. When I realized that I couldn't do it by myself and I had to stand on Isaiah 41 and 10, that took faith. And so I, I want to uh, 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 plead with you tonight, Amen. no matter what you face. And, and you know, I had to encourage one of them. Uh, one of my children that was uh, that's in, in 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 the service that that you can make it, you can make it. You just got to have your faith and wait on God, and that's what we got to do. We got to have the faith and just wait on God. I, and and it, 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 I think, uh, like I said earlier, I, I think our problem is that we mess up when we wait. We mess up when we wait. Hey, hey, hey you single? You sometimes single people mess up when we wait and, and now waiting like, well, okay, God, you ain't sent the right person. But Sally, Sally got interested in me. Big John got interested in me. So I'm going to go with the other side. Just waiting on the Lord. Amen. And so there's so many things that we, that we stump, stomp our feet or bump our head be, just because we won't stand in our faith. Stand in our faith and just wait on it. Wait, I say on the Lord, just, just, just wait. And I guarantee if you wait on the Lord, and, and, and be of good courage that he will deliver you like he delivered the Hebrew boys. God will deliver you and he will come. Oh, I hear somebody say, God might not come when you want him, but when he shows up, you'll be glad to see him. <laughs> and so he, he'll show up. And when he show up, he, it's going to be all right. That's why, I, you know, I so often say on here, the Bible said, let patient have a perfect works because I understand that. When you're patient and 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 uh, whatever you've been praying about, it come to pass. Think about it; it's perfect. You don't have to. You don't have to work on it. You don't have to try to figure nothing out. Cause see, everything God does is perfect. God don't have uh, do anything. He He don't. God don't have do do anything. And uh, and so that's what. We got to realize that once we have the patience of Jairus, y'all know I love to throw Jairus in there, because uh, that took some patience when you know your child is dying, but Jesus uh, busy with somebody else. And Jairus, and the Bible said Jairus stood there. Y'all know I'll talk about Jairus in a minute. How Jairus just stood there waiting on Jesus while his daughter was dying. Then, get back to Jairus. I think I talked about Jairus. Then how Jairus now, now look at this. I'm tying Jairus in here. I didn't mean to go this way. So I guess this is for somebody. How Jairus, in, in the you know, last show, I, I saying, you know, get away from anything negative in your atmosphere. Get away from anything negative in your atmosphere. That will hinder your faith being activated because God ain't going to come uh, unless he want to show them something. Unless he want to show, show them or make an example. But uh, Jairus, 
uh, was around some negative people. Why you say that, Evangelist? Well, thank you for asking. If you read the story about when Jesus got to Jerry's house, some of the people that were laughing and, and going on. Now, help me out here. Why would you, now if this man daughter's dying, there, there's nothing funny about it. And when when Jesus was telling them, you know, she's not dead, she's just asleep, and they're going to laugh. And that lets me know that Jerry had some ignorant, uh, insensitive, just be real, stupid people around this house. And so by, they, by them not having the atmosphere, the mindset, the faith set, what Jesus needed, Jesus told them to get gone in our language. He just told them to get gone. And so if you read that story about Jairus and, 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 and his household, Jesus just left the ones uh, there that had the faith. And so now the Hebrew boys, uh, to tie this in, thank you, Holy Ghost, to tie this in, the Hebrew boys, they wasn't separated. They was one. They agree about uh, telling King Nebuchadnezzar, if it don't go our way and we don't get delivered out of the fiery furnace, we still want you to know, King, that we're not going to worship your idol God and we still want you to know that God is faithful. So my, 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 I'm going to throw this at you. Catch it. Because... God can came in a different way tonight. So somebody he's speaking to specifically tonight. And so when God, anytime God shift my atmosphere, the way I thought it was going to go, I know it was for somebody Pacific. You know how much uh, Saul that that turned into Paul, Paul, Paul the Revelator, or Paul the Writer. Let me put it like that. Paul the Writer is John the Revelator. Paul the, the, the Writer to the churches. How he asked God to take the, take it, the thorn out of his flesh but God didn't. And I think some of my studies, I think some of them said that it might have been that Paul was going blind and that might have been his thorn. But how God did not heal Paul. So my thing is to you, if you have your sickness, even though I know the Bible said by his stripes we were healed, but if it's in the will of God that you deal with that sickness until you die, will you keep your faith in him? I'm going to say that again. Will you keep your faith in God, even though whatever you praying about, he don't take it away? I'm talking about like sickness or whatever. Uh, like, well, if you're dealing with migraines, high blood, diabetes, or you're on dialysis, or you got multiple sclerosis, or heart disease, whatever, or bronchitis, asthma, hearing, whatever, get glaucoma, cataracts, whatever's going on with you. If God do not heal you, will you still... Say, will you be like the Hebrew boys? And this is dealing with faith now. If you will you still be like the Hebrew boys? God, I'm gonna serve you, I'm gonna worship you, I'm gonna praise you if you don't take my migraines. If you if I uh uh I think uh years ago I might go back and, and, and deal with that sermon again. Years ago I preached a sermon that the world is not enough. So I, I think in that sermon years ago when I preached it. I talk about if if I lose my car, if I lose my house, if people walk away from me, I'm going to still serve God because the world is not enough. So, in other words, I'm saying if if you do, if they do put the padlock on your house, and if you do lose your car, uh, will you still serve God? Because the last time I heard the remix of uh, Jesus Will Work It Out, and I, I can't think of the lady's name. I used to know it. Uh, but ain't regulating with me right now. In that remix of that song, and uh, the lady that sings that song, that Jesus will work it out. She saying when she went overseas and came back was a padlock on her door. Said lost her cars and all that, the car that she had. But then she came back in that song and said that God blessed her with more than she ever had. And so don't get upset. Don't get mad at God because you exercise your faith and something is not going your way. You know that little phrase I've been saying the last few months, that better is coming. Maybe better is coming your way. Better is coming your way. God got more uh, better 
in store for you that you don't even know. That's why it's so important. I understand, Paul, when Paul said, I take to my last breath and I'll be present with the Lord. That uh that uh we walk by faith and not by sight. Because a lot of times when you go to the doctor, so I was going to the doctor by faith, even though he give you a report that you don't understand, and you're like <laughs> I didn't know I was this bad off, doc, or I didn't know I done got worse. But even though in the midst of that, like, if the doctor's saying that, okay, yeah, uh, uh, your cancer done went to another stage, or uh, 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 your sugar diabetes done, uh, done got worse, in the midst of all that, can you still say, okay, doc, besides going negative, because, you know, God don't deal with negative, say, okay, doc, appreciate that now. I like to see how God's going to work it out. God, you heard what the doctor said, that that the cancer went to another stage. Uh, my heart done got weaker. Uh, my breathing got worse or uh, whatever. Uh, they're going to put me on oxygen. Uh, God, uh, where is your faith at then? Will you keep the faith in God? Like, God, I know the doctor said I was going to be on oxygen. But, God, I know what you can do. I know you can touch my body. I know you can say one look, one word. And, and and I'll be all right. That that my body got to line up, and then my body got to have peace. You know, uh, cause I had like when when it, since I got had my back surgery, I got bad nerves nerves in my back because they took the L four and L five disc out and put a rod in there, and so a lot of times I have problems uh, from my hip down to the bottom of my feet with uh, nerves cutting up. Uh, about the same feeling that diabetic people have, and 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 and. And and so when I pray in faith, and I lay hands on myself, you can lay hands on yourself. People, people, God, don't be scared to lay hands on yourself. And I tell you, every time I lay hands on myself, and I and, and, and in the name of Jesus, not one time God left me hanging. Uh, sometimes the pain didn't go just then. Maybe it was a few minutes or 30 minutes later, the pain left. And sometimes it just, you know, it left just like that. And, and so many times when I be at work sometimes and my body get to aching and like, oh God, I may ache some, sometimes so bad that I feel like my eyes are going to be like one of the emojis cross up. But when I, and it's something, I can understand Rance Allen right here. Something about the name Jesus is the sweetest na uh, name I know. It's just something about when you, I understand uh, the blind Bartimaeus. When you get to calling on Jesus, and see, a lot of times when we facing uh, bad situations, we forget. Even I sometimes, even now, that uh, uh, I forget to call on Jesus until it get bad enough. Then it it, it, it clicks. Oh, let me call on Jesus. You know, like sometimes I, I I go to work and my atmosphere is not right. Because they're cutting up, cussing, and whatever they do, you know. And and I'm like, God, something ain't right. He like, you didn't pray before you. I like, oh, then I stop and I start praying right then. Then y'all to see how the atmosphere shift on my behalf. And so we got the power. I'm gonna say it again. We got the power, but we got to use the power that God has given us. Now I gotta put this footnote in there. I'm gonna get up out of here. All right. I gotta put this footnote in here. Now you won't have. The power like you should if you live in any kind of way. I'm going to say that again. You cannot move God like you can if you live in any kind of way. Uh, just, I'm just keeping it real. If you want to move God, try to walk, you try your best to, up, uh, to walk upright. And you'll see how you will move God on your behalf. I'm going to say that again. For I mean, To move God fast and in a hurry. Try your best to live upright much as you human humanly possible. Hum, hum, humanly possible. And you see how fast God will move on your behalf. And like I tell you, uh so often, I know I ain't said it lately. So many, just about every day in my life is like Sunday. And you like Vance, you lying. No, I'm not lying. Even you just said you, you go to work and sometimes your body just aching and that you have to lay hands on yourself. And you get the feeling better. That okay? That don't mean like every day ain't Sunday in my life. That didn't. That don't change my atmosphere because I'm not feeling good. It don't. It, it it don't change my attitude towards Jesus. Now, cause every day like Sunday in my life, that don't mean I'm riding in a Bentley and I got a, a split level house 
it, it, it don't mean you you know uh, I got a bank account just flowing with money. That don't mean every day is like something in my life. Cause you can ask some of these stars that's in Hollywood got all that and they commit suicide. No, when I talk about every day is like something in my life. That when when I think about the goodness of Jesus. And all that it done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. And reason I can say every day like Sunday in my life because when I don't feel good, when something not going my way, when I tell God about it, he makes it better. That's why I can say every day it's just like, just about like Sunday in my life. When I, you know, I done said before, when it's not like Sunday, it's just when, when I, when I done forgot to talk to the Lord. Well, you, yeah, sometimes I can go, you know, I, uh, I try to make it a habit, get up talking to him, go to bed talking to him. But I'm not perfect. Some days I get up and I go on about my business, it, you know, until something happens. I'm like, oh, well, something ain't right, something right. God, you ain't talked to me. I'm like, God, I'm sorry. You know, I repent. I repent so quick. Amen. I, I repent, repent so fast, quicker than a heartbeat. And so, but we got to make sure that we have the faith and face our situations like Paul, not Paul, like the Hebrew boys did. Whatever situation you face and talk to it like the Hebrew boys did. Talk to your situation. Say, no matter what, I know God is able to deliver me. But if he don't, I still not going to shack. I, I, I still not going to get high. I still not going to turn to the uh, to the liquor baller. I still not going to go out and, and, and sell this and that. I'm not going to do nothing to harm nobody of myself because, uh, 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 because God ain't showed up yet. You got to have the faith that no matter what, that God's going to come. And like I said, uh, before I got to this point in my life, I used to sweat all the way down to the last second. God used to, uh, whew, I tell you, I, I'm telling you, once y'all get your faith built up, you won't sweat as much. I, I, I promise you, you won't. Y'all, like I said, I done had some sweat, sweaty nights, sweaty days, just trusting. Not trusting, because if I was trusting, I wouldn't be sweating. Just worrying about different situations, issues that I had going on in my life. But now, I just give it to God. God is yours. <laughs> it's yours, God. It's, however you want to do it, it's yours. Ain't nothing I can do about it. And see, a lot of situations that we face Ain't nothing in the world we can do about it. So why are you sitting there worrying about it and making it inside just giving it to the Lord? Ain't nothing you can, your mama can't bear you out. Your daddy can't bear you out. Co-worker can't, co-worker can't bear you out. Your best friend can't, uh, bear you out. So only thing you have left is God. So just give it to him. And now, and let me throw this in. I'm trying to get out of here. Now, even though where I'm at today, when I do face situations, I give it to God, and the devil bring it back up. And I give it right back to God. He'll give it. I mean, he sometimes he throw it. He'll wait later on that day, two or three hours later, or the next day he'll bring it right back. I give it right back to God. So I said that to say this: when the devil throws something in your, when you gate, when you're not giving something to God, and the devil try to throw it back at you, throw it back to God. It ain't yours to keep. Come unto me, Matthew 11, 11 and twenty. I think come unto me. All you labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. So what you need, if you need rest and you tired of carrying that burden, give it to him. Then when the devil throw it back to you, you throw it to God. So yeah, it's a round table. <laughs> devil throw it to you, you throw it to God. The devil throw it back to you, you throw it back to God. And then that way you keep doing that and you will see that the devil won't throw it to you as much because he knows your faith is strong. I'm going to say it again. The devil... Once you keep throwing it to God, your your situation, God will not, I mean, the devil will not throw your problems, your burdens up to you as much because he know that your faith is grown and you're going to give it right back to God. Amen. Well, I appreciate y'all joining. So uh, that was a new one. I ain't never talked about the Hebrew boys like that before. Amen. So God shifted that thing in a new style tonight. And so, but, uh, so this was series number seven. Uh, about faith. So I hope y'all been following me. And those of you that you've been following me, your faith should be built up some since we, this is series number seven, like when I did prayer, the first two series, uh, I talked about prayer. I said, you are the, uh, no, uh, uh, was it prayer? Uh, well, my first series, uh, and I talked about that your life ought to be better. Uh, yeah, it was about prayer. 
that your prayer life ought to be better because uh by getting God to move and answer your prayers uh as long as you you know follow me as I follow the word. And uh, same way with faith. As long as you follow me as I follow the word and you and you get in that word yourself, you will see your faith ought to be uh growing, not stagnated. Amen. Anytime you listening, especially if you if you if you really putting forth the effort, yeah, your faith should be uh growing. Now if you knew, if you knew like uh my children are trying to get uh their faith grow, you're gonna have some trying times. And sometimes it's going to get worse for it get better. Trust me, I know. Especially when you're trying to get your faith built because the devil, he going to try you. I'm going to put it like this. He going to try the hell out of you. He is. The devil, I'm going to say it again, the devil going to try the hell out of you. He, he really is. And then once, it, then, then once you get your faith built up, I, I tell you, you can go like, okay, uh, because of, uh, well, I know when I went and got my new car, uh, back in 2015, that, uh, the guy said, uh, you know, Surratt, Mr. Surratt, that car you driving cause of your income, you don't supposed to be in that car. I said, uh, I know that, but the car and see, okay, let me put it like this. Now, then I get up out of here. Now I tell you about faith. I drive a 2016 Hyundai Elantra, but the, but when I got to the car dealer, it wasn't cost of my credit score, it was cost of my income. When I got uh, to the car dealer, they tried to tell me I wanted a stick, to get a stick shift Hyundai, which I could drive a stick shift, no problem. But they told me to get stick shift over there and the one uh, with hubcaps. I like, sir, and it didn't have no like Bluetooth and all that stuff in it for, you, for your phone and all that stuff. And I like, no, sir, I, I don't want, I, I said, I don't mind the stick shift, but I do not want. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't want no car with no hubcaps on them and I need a car with a Bluetooth. I said, sir, because the car, I just flipped, <laughs> flipped or rolled over. I said, it wasn't for my Bluetooth, just been able to hit a button and call for help. You know, ain't no telling how long we've been stuck. And I said, I got to have a car with Bluetooth in, and I said, I, I'm going to have some rims. I don't want no car with no hubcaps. That was just my preference. And, uh, and so, and, and I like, just give me a moment and give me a moment. And so I talked to God about it. I said, God, you know, da, 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 you know what I want. And next thing I know, God, the man said, all right, sir, we're going to, we eat for, uh, $1,500 to get you in this car. Bam. I was, I, I came home 25th, July of 2015 with a 2016 Hyundai that was like 26,000. And they, I got it for like, uh, 20 something thousand. And so, God to do it. It depends on your faith, and you got to be upright. You can't, you can't have a nasty attitude. You can't be a backstabber, two-faced, double-minded, whoremonger, uh, 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 a drunk, a liar. I'll, you, uh, you, 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 you got to uh, walk upright. Let me read this scripture. Now, then, once again, I'm going to try to get out of here. I think Cleastic. Cleasted, then I promise you I'm going to leave. Cleasted, the third chapter. And, no, wrong thing. Wrong thing. I think it's in Proverbs. That's, 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 uh, that's something else. I think in Proverbs, the seven things that the Lord hate. I know lie, lying was in there. And so we got to, we got to do right if we want God to open up the windows of heaven, not crack. Y'all know I'm, I'm bad about putting this. I don't want the windows of heaven cracked. I want it wide open. Why does God can open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings? I won't have room enough to receive. I don't want to be double-minded to keep the windows like that. I don't want to be hatred, mean, nasty, stingy, you know, two-faced, homemonger. You, you know, people can't stand to see you coming because of, of your lifestyle because you're living wrong. It, you know, I don't want my window to be like this. I want my one to be like that. And so I try to, my best to walk upright for God can pour out blessings up on me. I won't have room enough to receive. I want to be a lender and not a borrower. Mm. All right. Then the Father, I thank you for uh, uh, for Periscope, LinkedIn, Facebook. Now, God, I thank you for people watching me from Africa, uh, Jerusalem, Israel, uh, Canada, Australia, 
uh, Kenya, Ghana, uh, uh, some more God, wherever they're watching me from God, United States, God, I thank you for them. God, I appreciate them. God, God, I pray right now that you bless. They're going out. They're coming in. God, let them know they're blessing the field and in the city. God, where their prayer requests being, God, let them know if they have faith in you, trust, and hold out until they change come that you will bless them in their season. You will bless them in due time. So, God, I pray right now that you uh, strengthen us where we weak, build us up where we torn down. God, help us in this walk of life that, that we have the right faith that pleases you, not man, but to please you. God, we love you. We praise you. We magnify your name. So, God, right now we pray for people that's uh, grieving because they don't uh, 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 lost a loved one. God, we pray for people uh, right now that is at a is at a crossroad in their life. We pray right now that somebody got some issues going on in their home, going on on their job, going on in their health. God, let them know if they lean to you and, 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 and lean not to their own understandings, and if they turn their burdens and, they, and, and cast all their cares upon you, that they'll be all right. And God, help us not to lean to our own understanding, but let you... Uh, lead us and guide us every step away. God, order our steps. And as you order our steps, God, we pray that we will have the mindset, the heart set, to follow the steps that you, follow the orders that you have given our steps. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank y'all for watching tonight. I love you, but God love you best. Like I always say before I leave you, don't let your doubt kill your faith, but let your faith kill your doubt. Surely, if you do that, God will work it out and everything's going to be all right. Amen. Until we meet again, keep looking to the hills which come to your help, knowing that all your help don't come from mom and daddy. Don't come from your coworkers or your best friend or your family member. That all your help comes from the Lord. Amen. You, you, you do that, it's going to be all right. All right. Until we meet again, amen. Keep your trust and faith in the Lord.